Demon and Crepo. Thank you very much. And wow, what a pair of games that was. Gambit have turned up to win this tournament. I talked about Intel Extreme Masters being their tournament. Why the hell did I bet against Gambit? I have no idea why. I have no idea why. So, Crepo, lots to talk about in those games. Level 1. Let's talk about both Level 1 games to start with because at the start, you said when we were upstairs, it's like this is Gambit's Level 1 tactic. Yeah, initially, I have to admit, I was wrong saying Gambit is always passionate. Uh, pass Passive? Passive is the word I'm That's looking for. That's the word for. you're after. Yeah, English is very hard sometimes. Uh, but they have this signature move where Eddie and, and Genja, basically, or the support and Genja, basically move out and try to contest the blue buff, which they predict is going to be done by two people, and then they force the jungler and the top laner off of it, and hopefully even steal it, and that's really good. In theory, Cloud9 could mirror that at the other side, but they weren't ready for it, and that definitely gave Gambit the edge game one. And then the second game, they, they basically read Cloud9 like a book, predicted the invade again. It ended up being a two for two trade, but Gambit was definitely ready for that. So definitely on top of their level one game. And both of those games, it seemed that Gambit just singled out balls. He was absolutely getting nailed in both games, had no chance to farm. Every time they just kept the pressure on that rumble. Yeah, you have to admit those second game, though, 3v1, Balls really couldn't do that much. Yeah. He's a, he's a utility uh, person like Rumble. He can still do well in fights. He, he can try and roam. Every time he tried to roam, he was still level 5. I mean, he had so much going against him. Like, he got frozen by Darren. By the time the wave re reached his tower, he was level 5. Darren was level 7. Gamut was controlling the pace of the game. They pushed when they wanted. They rotated pretty well. Carl and I had some, some really good fights coming back whenever they uh, actually managed to get Gamut on the back foot. Whenever Alex had to use uh, Shockwave to disengage, for example, then that's when Carl and I could re-engage. But otherwise, it was really hard, and, and Gamut just controlled the pace so, so well. And there was the fight, if I recall, in game one, where Gamut were backing off. And then Cloud9 just chased. And it was like, there was no objective to gain. They just simply chased them into the jungle. And we, we were all sat there saying, why are they doing this? Yeah, it is basically what Gambit does really well. I mean, they lure you in and then they activate the Sea Hero Kill Hero switch. And actually, <laughs> that's something I want to point out. Their composition was built around that. Both of the times they had any support. They also had Lissandra, so that's double CC, crowd control effects, stuns and snares, etc. that can chain on top of each other, kill one guy. Game one, they had Kha'Zix on, on Alex Ish that could jump around and finish people off. We saw that as well. Beautiful zoning game one by, by Darian as well. He just went in, pushed them back, went back. They come a little closer. Eddie jumps in, tibbers a couple of people. And then Alex just waits at the, at the outskirts of the fight, jumps in, gets the resets, jumps out again. And you can see that this is a coordinated gambit. This is a really strong gambit that's showing up today. Do, I mean, do we see this as the gambit of old? Or, or we simply put it down to, this is a well-rested gambit that's had a chance to not travel so much like they're going to be once again on the LCS. Is this, is this simply what they've done? I mean. Gambit of old or strong Gambit, I don't care, but it's really nice to see them performing that well. I just hope that it doesn't deteriorate over time once they start going back and forth mm. every week, because now Eddie, he was at home playing at ease, playing solo queue, dual queuing Genja every time, but once he starts traveling from Omsk back and forth again, he's going to lose a day on each side of the LCS, and hopefully, for Gambit at least, and not hopefully for us, that's not going to punish him too hard. <laughs> and talking of Eddie, and effectively all the supports here, You've, you've had a bone to pick with the supports lady with these Doran shields. We've not seen one yet. Yeah, everybody keeps buying it in the solo queue and had to mess with me because they know how much I hate Doran shield. But they've all threatened to uh, play Doran shield in competitive and watch me cry. But so far, none of them had uh, well, the balls to do it. So I'm still <laughs> waiting for, uh, for Eddie to bring out the Doran shield. Well, we'll see whether that happens. Of course, semifinals coming up soon. But we want to hear what Alex Itch has to say with shocks. We sure do, D-Man, and he has a bone to pick with you, because uh, how does it make you feel that D-Man betted against you? Yeah, I'm upset, and I think that our team lost one friend today. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter, but anyway, seriously, great series here and a great swoop in game one. You jumping around as Kazix, and how much do you think of that dominating performance derived of that invade you guys planned on blue in the beginning? So we were not playing that invade. That is some kind of the stuff that happened, because... Uh, we got the vision on them, and we saw that their double lane is not there, so it was pretty easy invade. And uh, after that invade, to, uh, we got ahead, though uh, I died mid, so I needed to rotate to Rumble, but it was really easy for me and Diamond to kill Rumble over and over, and then I got farmed and could roll the game. Absolutely, and then uh, come game two, your nemesis, Riven, in the mid lane, you're up against her with Oriana. How did that go? So, I... Uh, like, Oriana against Riven is not the best matchup for Oriana, but I needed to pick something safe, and uh, 
So I decided that Ariana would be the best pick, and they knew that our late game is so much stronger because, like, you could see that in late game they couldn't kill me at all. I got like 4K, 4K HP with all the shields. So only thing that we needed to was to survive the early and mid game, and we did it. So, is there anything you think they um, that they did wrong, particularly in picks, that could have, if they chose something else, they could have gotten you in trouble, or were you just prepared for anything they might have had? So I think that like. They were too focused on AD mid and the uh, AP top, so and these were like the weak points of the team overall because uh, like Rumble was pretty smashed every game and uh, in the mid the lane or even NZ like they got really good early, so okay mi mid game but in late game they were falling hard behind. All right, so uh, great stuff here from you guys again. Another IEM final. Do you want your EU EU matchup versus Fnatic or do you want to play CLG and why? So, Boris says that we want to play Fnatic and it will be EU final. <laughs> All right, well, a lot of Europeans in the studio very happy with that. Great performance here. Good luck later on in uh, the final, of course. And we're going to go over to Paul for.